I really want to hear how it's been. You you were co-developing uh, Modern Warfare 3. How is it for you now stepping in and like sort of this is your baby, as I, I talked about before, uh, and sort of showing you can you can do Call of Duty, you can innovate and all that. It's been really remarkable. It was an honor to be given the the chance. And you know I don't know what the right analogy is, but I think about it, you know, being maybe like an athlete and aspiring to be the best you can be and. You know, when the time comes that the coach puts you in, right? You're at the World Cup and your team's there and the coach puts you in, you know you're ready, right? We were ready. I mean, it was great what we did on Dead Space. It was great what we did with Infinity Ward on MW3, but we were ready. Um, and we took the opportunity um, in the three years, focused on next gen, and this team geared up and hit it hard and with passion and determination. And um, I think we, we maximized every bit of the opportunity that Activision gave us, and we're pretty proud of what we have now for Advanced Warfare. All right. Uh, how do you balance doing a great narrative, and now you have someone like Kevin Spacey, and, and still that gameplay in some ways, you know, it's a game, so it should be very important? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, they're, they're all important. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's, uh, if it's exactly this balance um, but it's a good question what we do is we write a story um, and at the same time we're, we're coming up with ideas for the gameplay and uh, the one thing that I will say is that the if we can't find something that's fun we'll kind of work or we'll, we'll make sure the story will work around that in this case um, we were we had some really fun mechanics that we, we were started to uh, work on but the story was something that we had some goals. We're going to make a good story, a great story. Um, we wanted to to feel emotional. We wanted to have some great characters as well. So we spent a little bit more time and care, I think, on getting to know the characters, but kind of getting to know their personalities and how they interact. And um, you'll see that in the game, in which you know, hopefully, you'll be pulled along not only by the new and innovative gameplay, but that the story will pull you along. People need a leader who can give them both the support and the constraints to keep chaos at bay. You give them that, and they'll follow. And that's where I come in. How, how has it been working with uh, Kevin Spacey and, uh, and some of the other actors, Troy Baker's in there as well? Yeah, we got quite a, quite a cast there. We're really proud of them. And, and uh, Gideon and all the guys have been really, really great actors. You know, when you bring Kevin Spacey on, you're really up in the ante and you're up in the uh, the quality bar, and and all the other actors saw that when they came when they came on stage. We hadn't even told them, and then um, Kevin comes on, and you could just see everybody go, "Oh boy, you know, I better bring my A game." But uh, Kevin really, um, he not only brings the quality to his acting, but um, you know, to the storytelling and to the, he, he understands his character an awful lot and he brought a lot to that as well. Can you talk a little bit more about the inspirations behind some of the weapons and vehicles that, that we see in this that are sort of future tech? Yeah, once again, a lot of the uh, inspiration was, um, you know, looking and see what, uh, what's out there right now. What is some of the science? And, and so, for example, the directed energy weapons that we're seeing out there are, are based on things that we've heard being experimented with in the um, in the field, actually, um, or you know, in um, you know, just scientists and, and DARPA working on stuff like that. Um, you know, some of the the other things we like the six-legged legged tank was we had an idea for it, but what solidified it was was seeing it at, at NASA. And um, you know, we've we've worked with uh, MIT and and uh, Berkeley and um, the Human Genome Group and the Pentagon and the, it one after another after another to find out what's what's going on what are some of the trends and then you know s sort of extrapolating those to the future how do you keep uh making both guns and everything uh both fun and but also balanced in uh in multiplayer yeah call of duty is about balance right we all know that at the core of it you want to customize your play style to how you want to play but you never want to be in a situation where people feel like they're at a disadvantage because they didn't choose the right combination, right? So we spent a lot of time with Pick 13, even more combinations than ever, with the addition of score streaks and customizable score streaks, and now loot, almost 350 weapon variants. 
it's a big challenge and it's a huge focus. And so absolutely, I know that my loadout, my pick 13, I'm going to beat Glenn every single time I play, which happens every single time I play. Not because I chose better weapons, because he cheats. <laughs> but because it's my skill, right? And, and that's what we want, right? And so you don't want somebody saying, oh man, when you take this SMG with this perk, with this exo ability, now you dominate. We don't want that for our fans. Our fans don't want it. Um, and so it's been a huge focus for the team since day one. Exo cheat. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about the the design in, in some of these suits and all this customization you can do now? Yeah, I mean, uh, like some of it, of course, is based on uh, the Sentinel and uh, Atlas and PMCs and, and uh, the Marines. And then uh, we got really creative. Uh, we've got a lot of cool cool stuff in there that will that will uh, I think that that people would be pretty excited to get. But um, you know, we wanted something that that looks functional that is functional at the same same time looks pretty cool i mean you want to get we want you to see that something that somebody has and say that looks badass i gotta try and get that um and i think that's with the with the weapons you see a cool cool weapon that somebody gets in loot drop and uh i think it makes you want to keep going and finding out what else we have up our sleeves the concept that we had was really the most reward based multiplayer to date and so we prefer, preserve the XP progression, right? And everyone knows what that is, and everyone enjoys ranking through XP and growing and unlocking your character as you play more and more. Um, we also wanted to give you rewards based off of time, and we've always felt like loot has been just a great compulsion in other games that we love to play. Uh, and then there are challenge-based rewards, right? Things that you unlock for doing specific actions. Get this many headshots or this many strafe kills. You know, you've seen those before in the past. and so. By bringing that all together, you do have rewards in the short term. You have rewards that bring you back over and over again through loot. You have the long game sort of completionist mentality, like I'm going to unlock everything and get the, the ultra rare skins. And so, man, there are there are more than a thousand rewards, the greatest amount of rewards we've ever seen in Call of Duty. And we think it's going to make people just have more fun playing and play more often. All right. And with guns, you've you've uh, this game is in the future, so of course that influenced the guns. How how do you keep, you know, a lot of people probably say, I want that gun that I really liked. Uh, how, how do you keep that balance? Well, that fortunately for us was not a huge challenge because when you look and you do the research on what has happened with weapon technology over the last hundred years, there's a lot of things that haven't changed. Um, yeah. The first pistol, the 1911, right? Looks exactly like modern pistol today. Why is that? It's because the anatomy of your hand has not changed. And we don't think that's going to change anytime soon. So pistols will look like pistols. Uh, the AK-47 has been around for 70 years. It's still one of the most popular weapons on the battlefield. We believe that that's going to still be in the battlefield in 40 years. So we'll have both classic and recognizable weapons that you've enjoyed from the past. And with the introduction of the technology of the future, we're doing great new things around directed energy weapons like the EM-1s and the, the sonic shotgun like the TAC-19 and the heavy weapons, which are these just these big death machines that you're able to carry now because you've got the strength of the EXO. So I, we think we have, with nearly 350 weapons in the game, we've got, we've got a weapon for everyone.